Greetings and welcome to G.I. Joe Book episode 342. My name is Steve, and since the beginning of the year, we've been doing long-form G.I. Joe toy reviews, figures, vehicles, with one simple rule. We each have to own the figure or vehicle under discussion. This time, we're going to break tradition. We're going to switch things up and do a vehicle toy that none of us own. But two out of the three of us kind of like, and one does not. <laughs> it is the Bridge Lair Toss and Cross from 1985. And we're going to leave the discussion of its merits till the very end. So you can play a little who done it almost. Which of the three G.I. Joburg hosts dislikes this vehicle? We're going to get into it. But I'm not alone. As always, I have my good buddies. Hello, Paul. Hey, Steve. And hey, Big Boss. <laughs> Speaking to the mic, Paul. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, Steve, and hey, Berg Force. There he is. He's How's being dramatic. Buddy? And Rob's in the mix. Hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? What up? How's it going? Yeah, it's nice and dark up in here. Get to not be seen. Get to hey. uh, <laughs> all right. So, the bridge layer. Uh, I suppose Utility we don't want to spoil the ending. Excellence. But um, this is a vehicle that came out in 1985. So, has that appeal of just being an extremely well thought out um very realistic nicely designed uh it's part of the heyday of gi joe so it's got a lot of credit there it's a one trick pony so it hasn't seen as much use as like a mauler or an all a whale. striking or whale yeah. but, but it comes in the classic green. Appeal? classic green a uh, very mm -hmm. realistic and signature driver. And oh, it's happened. <laughs> and I think we can uh, start the discussion by bringing up the world. blueprints. How about it? Yeah. Mm. No, and I also just like want to say like its functionality is very rooted in like real world utility. You know, it's not absolutely. It's not, I like, mean, it's not a it's not a, a, a construction vehicle with missiles. You know. Yeah, so. well, as 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 old as tanks are, so are bridge layers. At least the concept of bridge laying. I mean, in World War One, they mm. there were even tanks just carrying around um, bundles of sticks to be able to help make it easier to cross things, or they would actually put carry pipes on the tanks to make it easier to kind of lay them down and cross well, until eventually it was formalized yeah. as as an actual thing in in the armies. Protect these and sorry, like, like, failed that's... to 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 research. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Because tanks were mm. so cumbersome, and because <laughs> the Great War uh, style of warfare was very pitted yeah. terrain, trenches. from artillery shells, mm. from trenches, getting a lumbering warfare. tank to even mm. cross no man's land was an ordeal. Um, so yeah, a support vehicle like a bridge layer, essential would have been perfect. Yeah, by World War Two, they were they were an actual thing. Um, many armies and modern bridge layers exist uh, in abundance. I remember Top Trump's card, and the bridge layer card had like the highest sort of kilowatt rating, like it was the most powerful tank. It would have to be, you know, mm. it's carrying a giant bridge on top of it. I mean, many of the modern ones are made from aluminium, so they're a lot lighter than they used to be. Um, but they are exceptionally strong. Um, and they're also different variants as well. This is the most common variant, but you also get um, submersible variants as well. What? Um, hmm. Yeah, where they actually essentially become pontoons, and you can actually oh, string right. together several of them. And the cool thing about those ones is that they can also be used either as a bridge or as fairies. You know, fairies. Fascinating, Rob. Okay. That is Isn't crazy. That wild? But this bridge there, points to you. they've points GI to it up more. because it's got and two it's... cannons that fire RAP, which are rocket-assisted projectiles. For anyone in the dark, a rocket-assisted projectile is, um, it's like a shell, but it's got a rocket engine in it to increase Ooh. its range, presumably. Basically, what happens to Rob after spicy food? <laughs> it's so true. And, and they're chambered at 105 millimeters, which brings it pretty much up to like almost main battle tank tank size. 
maybe not mm. a modern battle tank. I think mm, I'm speaking out of turn, perhaps, but I think the the, the Abrams has 120 millimeter, My so it's goodness. not far off, f- 15 mils shy of like a main battle tank's big ass gun. Hmm. But it's only forward facing, so they swivel out to the side. Oh, do they? Okay. It's a bit awkward because obviously a main battle tank would want to have its cannon mounted centrally and at the mm. highest point of the vehicle so that it has a good vantage point <laughs> and a 360 degree rotation. But mm. there being two on the bridge layer allowed to swing out to the side. So you've got pretty much 270 degrees of, of, of shooting. It's probably it very useful for... Of- yeah, I mean, probably very difficult to shoot moving targets, but very good against structures. Kind of knock and something out of the way. To ward off opponents. I mean, it occurs to me that uh, at a at a, ro- a rocket assisted projectile, if it is um, further shooting than a regular tank shell, uh, provided you see your enemy approaching, like if the bridge layer is 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 stuck and deploying its bridge and can't move, it has this kind of standoff capability to take shots at at enemies before they can come in range and shoot you. So Mm -hmm. if it has to be stationary and present itself as a big target, it's at least got some bite. Yeah, some sort of covering fire. You know, it's kind of laying the bridge down, the guns are firing out the sides. (laughs) Is there anything else on the blueprints that you'd like to bring out? The bridge there did not get a TAC entry in the Action Force comic books. So the other best, um, I suppose, uh, port of call in terms of its stats would be um, there was a, a card that had some information, um, but I think the blueprint is, is is a more primary source of information than that. So uh, the one thing that is actually quite notable about the blueprints is how um, modest they kind of are. Mm. Uh, now that we see Google, <laughs> um, oh, sorry. How, no, no, it's all good. It's how modest they are. Um, you know, we've got features like elevator mechanism, high capacity main radiator. You know, then we've got t- titanium alloy, nylon, micro mesh, bonded hull. You know, we're getting like very, these are very like, m- like modest stats. It's not like it can go from zero to 5,000 in like two seconds. Yeah, and it's, it's very like, realistic. You know, you know it's yeah. kind of like, this very is, grounded. It, is the, it makes you feel like this is a real thing. I'm playing with a real thing from the real world. Which is or, a hallmark of say, like the 1985 series uh, and yeah. before. Like where they were so hung up on the suspension of disbelief that they weren't selling you a, a cool toy necessarily. They were selling mm. you a model kit. And so mm-hmm. yeah. they were invested with all the kind of the real world jargon. Sometimes it gets away from itself like clearly the person writing the copy wasn't entirely sure what they were writing they were just like these are cool terms <laughs> that i will put into the thing and kids will marvel at them because they don't have google and they can't figure out Ooh, exactly okay. the points i wanted yeah. to make earlier mm-hmm. but yeah like this they all seem this grounded all tracks, because we don't know better kind of thing no but this all tracks come on uh, yeah, it, it feels. I haven't. I haven't done the due diligence and gone and like compared that to a real world version of it. But to me, the sells itself well as very believable and grounded. So, yeah, yeah. it's just laying it out. Steve, like yeah. These are the pieces that that make it a bridge layer. You know, it has hydraulic mm-hmm. stuff. These things do this. It assists it in doing this thing, and it can defend itself. Yeah, it's got guns. Yep, boom, nothing boom, too boom, racy. Boom. Shall we talk a little bit about its media appearances then, gents? Yeah. Whoa. Did it even <laughs> appear in anything? Like it it's not shooting. Like would it would you even need it in a show or a comic? Uh I, so I was order of battles entry. It's has a weight of twenty three tons, twenty three point four tons. Uh it has yeah, a yeah. speed of forty four miles per hour, which puts it at about well, that's that's pretty quick. That's over seventy kilometers per hour for if if you're metric and it's I'm range curious, is 550 though. miles which is like 800 kilometers i'm gonna guess is that its speed with the bridge on it or the with the bridge off though because i mean the bridge doesn't weigh nothing you know <laughs> no, yeah, wind weird. resistance and wind resistance yeah <laughs> no which i don't know but like a race car without quick. that thing on <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty quick with or without it um mm. Not quite as quick as once again, real real world example being the Abrams. Abrams is a bit quicker than that, but 
Yeah, but I mean, that's or essentially what a vehicle. bridge layer is, you know, often, quite often, it is a modified tank. They've A lot of the time, they've taken off, you know, whatever the main turret is, and they've modified it in a way that allows it to have a mechanism that does the bridge laying. So a lot of real-world ones are literally just tanks that have been converted into bridge layers, unless, you know, later versions, which are specifically those, especially the submersible ones, or, I mean, mm -hmm. amphibious ones are submersible. Yeah. Now, it says it's okay. able to span a, a a river crossing or whatever it needs to span of 23 feet. Now, Ooh, that, that equates doesn't... to 7 meters, which doesn't really That's seem actually... very far. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Is... Yeah, because if you compare, um, the US, US has, with, with, it's called the M104 Wolverine. Um, and yeah, it's and bridge. <laughs> um, Shiggity snick, but I'm a Wolverine. <laughs> Niggity snick. <laughs> it's bridge is capable of, uh, it has a 26 meter bridge. And a lot of other ones on average is approximately 20 meters. So a seven meter bridge is actually that. So I think I know what happened here. I'm referencing, I'm referencing the order of battle entry. I think they meant to save. Uh, I think they they screwed up metric and imperial, and it's it's easy to understand why because in the armed forces they, they use metrics. metrics. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in the comic book writing worlds they don't. So yes, yeah. uh, the bridge layer is able to span a river crossing of twenty three feet. Let's take that to mean meters, and that seems a lot more. Uh, I would absolutely reasonable. agree with that. I so mean, that'd be more like um, seventy feet. Mm. Hmm. Let's see. Fair enough. Punch that into Google. What do we got? 70 feet to meters. Uh, yeah, here we are oh, critting the yanks oh. for their like, imperial thing and them getting it wrong. But like, well, here's us. 20, uh, <laughs> guys, I was meters right. Feet. 20 oh, really? meters are just over 70 feet. Hey, You're incredible. The back, Steve anyway, Cheers. let's talk media. Uh, its first appearance, well, it was Pyramid of Darkness, I believe, in 1980. Yeah, which episode three? Which of I keep forgetting Darkness. about, in all honesty, because like it's, for yeah, me, it's, my, it's the like, debut I, I of mean, I have my first appearance and, of it. and Bazooka as um, well. So they kind of eclipse the bridge layer a bit. That is unfortunate because it's so good. I love how <laughs> the driver just fades. So we're looking at screenshots from Pyramid of Darkness, and there's a great one. <laughs> where the driver essentially just fades into the rest of the vehicle. It's like he's a plastic toy. <laughs> so true army man. He's driving this thing. Yeah. He does Shame. get a line. Uh, I think Duke. Is it Duke? No, this isn't the episode where Duke sort of... Oh, no, wait. No, no, he does get a line. So, yeah, he, he makes his first appearance and the bridge layer makes his first appearance in part three of Pyramid of Darkness. And um, he's colorized a bit differently. A lot more green going on. His helmet and is helmet. out in orange. Mm. Quite like that colorization. He's green. Me too. I also like the tones of that green. his helmet is more military. Yeah. Because yeah. as we'll discuss later, having a guy with an orange construction helmet kind of limits his role. You can't exactly Get give shot. him an assault rifle and a backpack and make him one of the boys. Mm. Which is something that you can do with a lot of Joes, but not with Tollbooth. Yeah, so the bridge layer <laughs> lays a bridge over the sort of massive ice crevasse and sends itself yes. and a, <laughs> a snowcat, a mauler, battle bear, etc. into the fight. Its next <laughs> appearance, I'm not sure, but Paul referenced uh, Captives of Cobra, and that's yes. a good one. It needs to fuel <laughs> Sorry, Steve. A, no, you can Steve. drive it with pleasure, sir. Um, Sweet, it man. It fjord a, a gap in order to get to these explosive crystals. Check this gap. It's massive. It's, it is massive. That is pretty uh, terrifying, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to really trust gorge, bro. your equipment, <laughs> but also really trust the two <laughs> sort of edges that it's spanning up across. Because if those start mm. giving way while you're moving a tank, I mean, it to be the first armored vehicle to cross it is... <laughs> it's pretty awesome. scary. Yeah. But like the, the process of bridge lane is actually very fast. Um, as an example, the M104 Wolverine, it can lay its bridge in under four minutes. 
So it's a very quick process of getting that bridge down. Some people down. would say that's quite a slow process. <laughs> well, the toss and cross can lay its bridge. I mean, no kidding. I've seen it in commercials. Uh, it can do it in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. And they uh, definitely the do not waste any animation time um, with four minutes of bridge laying. No, oh, no, for sure. No, they definitely Very don't. Swift. For dramatic effect, do, you have to speed it up. For me, for me, like this was the the most memorable use of the the bridge layer. Like, I know. I mean, we've all seen Pyramid of Darkness, and I keep forgetting that mm. it's in there. But I always come back to this um, episode because it was something that I watched in my childhood. But it's just that this is where, like, I didn't think that this vehicle existed as a toy. It was always like, mm. okay, you know, it's just some like generic military thing that they're using to like create a bridge with. Um, so imagine my surprise when I realized it was actually a, a vehicle for that. I was like, oh, wow. So that's why this is kind of memorable for me. Um, and I also feel the cartoon uses this uh, vehicle in the most extreme circumstances. I mean, we've got here. Here it is. Shown <laughs> Grand from Canyon. Yes. <laughs> Where do they find these huge gaps that have no way of traversing on either side? I mean, yeah, sure. Yes. In the high mountains. But th th in Captives of the Cobra, it's just like... Are they at the Grand Canyon? I don't know. I can't remember exactly the location that they're in. It's just like, it's a crevasse. It's a gorge. It's the a funniest whatever. thing would be is if the camera just zoomed out a little bit further, you'd see that the crevice ends like a couple of meters <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah, I mean, look at that <laughs> land mass. Look at the size of the land mass in the background, how it stretches. I, I can't believe that this crack in Earth goes as far as they yeah. imply it does, and or as deep as it does. From this direction. But that's drama. That's <laughs> drama, right? So that's what you want. You're trying to tell a story. And and I think in some ways, this is kind of also to the bridge layer's uh, detriment, which I'm, I'm sure we'll get into a little bit later. But mm. uh, it has got some cool cartoon appearances, albeit dramatic. That is unfortunate. <laughs> um, You're right. In fact, actually, guys, in the comments, please let us know of, uh, of more. You know, there are so many G.I. Joe cartoons, oh and it's easy for them to all blend into one big mess. What so is your favorite other moments with with this, Please layer. let us know in the comments, yeah. Anyway, sorry, Steve. Uh, you, curious, I think you want uh, to jump on another anyone media. To this, I'm curious if anyone listening to this uh, has figured out which of the three of us is most critical of this toy and doesn't want it in their collection. Yeah. It's anybody's guess now, because the praise train continues. <laughs> I got a screen grab of like the, the the very nicely animated cockpit detail. Ooh, tall booth handling is those. Toy, but <laughs> we see so tall booth it. manipulating two kind of levers. There's a, a, a station that has lots of dials and gauges. Um, it's lovingly represented in something that just speaks to the, the level of care uh, that existed in the Sunbow animation series to bring mm. out details of vehicles that doesn't that don't necessarily exist. I mean, this is an absolute throwaway shot. They could have just had the bridge layer extending its bridge and be done with it. But they showed mm. a cockpit shot of Tollbooth working the controls. And I think that is lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. He handles those rods really good. <laughs> <laughs> I alluded to its, uh, its commercial appearance earlier. <laughs> and uh, in the commercial that advertises the bridge layer, Cobra takes out a bridge, they blow it up very dramatically, the kid flips the bridge off, and Whoa. the bridge there has to come in. <laughs> flips his mom off. I mean, in play, it's always going to be a suspension of disbelief situation because, yes, you have very specifically dug out a rut for your toy to place mm. the bridge across. Um, of course. Yeah, you would be able to cross it on either side, but if you are living in that imaginary world, stay there, my friend, stay there. Um, because you're having the time of your life playing with your bridge laying toy and the ore striker is able to cross as a result. And then what's so clever about the mechanism, the bridge layer crosses itself and is able to retrieve the bridge, which they demonstrate in the commercial, yeah. albeit very quickly. Like you have to know what you're it's looking at to understand what's going on. Very impressive toy design that. No. Is it really? I mean, I think it really is. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it it's mirrors the like, real-world versions of it, you know, which is great. Yeah. If I had to ask somebody, mm. if I went to somebody and I was like, hey, I need you to make a toy car and it needs to be able to do this, have this functionality and not have the reference of this toy in existence before then, 
I think they'd have a pretty hard time trying to figure out how to actually get that work smooth uh, to work smoothly. Yeah, I think they'll try to find Cold. a lot more excuses as to why I can't do what I'm asking them to do if they didn't yeah. have this as reference. It's impressive. Take the little um, lazy way out, not do it. Take correctly. the one. I I would like to hazard that um, if the world really was run by conspiracies and secret societies, that a toy like this would be greenlit, especially for the sole purpose of trying to get kids to to dig trenches into places. Yeah. Um, and one would have to imagine, old. you know, well, yeah, exactly. What's the purpose of getting like, you know, the, the nation's children to build trenches? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but that, like, if you were someone who wanted to look for a conspiracy and some kind of uh, sanity and in the insanity of the world that we live in, but uh, yeah, anyway, it's just a, it was sure. a fleeting and silly thought. Get them ready for road with everybody. I actually had to irritate that irritate people with that thought. So enjoy. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms Pleasure, of man. comic book appearances, uh, one of note. If there were more, I missed them. And it came way after the bridge layer had stopped being sold, in fact. In issue mm. 76, which is right smack dab in the, the heat of the Cobra Island Civil War, in the year 1988, the bridge layer Jeez. lays a bridge across a, uh, like a quicksand <laughs> pit. Uh, the G.I. Joe armored convoy is encroaching into, into Cobra Island. Um, on the assault, they've made a, 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 a marine landing using a landing craft. For some reason, the slugger is leading the charge. Uh, I mean, metatextually, it's the reason the reason the slugger is leading the charge is because Larry feels like the slugger is the most disposable of the convoy. <laughs> uh, we'll get into the merits of the slugger on an, another episode, perhaps. He obviously forgot the armor dealer yeah. existed. <laughs> Well, the armor <laughs> dealer doesn't have quite the same heft. He wanted something big to plunge into the quicksand and be basically unrecoverable. Anyway, uh, they bring the bridge layer up to span this quicksand so the rest of the convoy can cross it without falling in. And that's it. Boom. They do um, name check Tollbooth, but incorrectly. Because Tollbooth, they say, bad move, Tollbooth. That's quicksand. Uh, referencing the driver of the slugger, who is actually Thunder, oh, or should be oops. Thunder. Maybe Tollbooth is driving that. Maybe they swapped that day. Tollbooth is in the slugger, and Thunder is in the bridge layer. But nah, probably not. Can no, that's a there. whoopsie. And that's yeah. it. Good thing they brought it along. Like, really? there was limited space on that landing craft, but they decided to bring the bridge yeah. layer along. Is, yeah, that's such, entering... like, plot armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, but at the same time, if you're entering territory, you know, that unknown territory or that you haven't mapped out properly, you don't know the lay of the land, the cartography, I guess, um, it is a good idea to bring a bridge there along with you because you never know if you're going to have to come across quicksand or broken mm. bridges that are in the way of you and your objective. It's a well, very important part of land uh, warfare, you know. I wasn't going to mention mm. it, but uh, the, the plotting of that section... Uh, holds that Crocmaster had kind of laid out markers for them to plot a safe course to the battle. Oh, you know, a way of navigating the swamps that was them. safe for armored vehicles. However, Tollbooth slash Thunder, whoever is driving the slugger, uh, ignores those markers and sees a shortcut. And that's what lands him in, in, in jeopardy. That's what happens when you don't trust Croc Master. When you, you don't gotta, trust the devil. Listen to the Croc. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. All right. What's next? A discussion of the plastic. If you're still wondering at this point, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, who of us mm. uh, dislikes this toy, wonder no further. I think it's time to unveil. I think it's um, pretty obvious. Is it? Is it now? Mm. I don't know. Should we like? Should we give people one more, one more thing about the plastic? Maybe and then give them just one. I more don't know. Like it's just difficult to talk about the plastic if you don't like it. You know, it's tough to kind of like, uh, like oh yeah, plastic, uh, the toy. <laughs> Once again, we have three D uh, Joe's to thank for the excellent reference material when it comes to this. Yes, beautiful photography. 
showing Go all 3D. of it is doing its things. Yeah. Um, have we like? Uh, should we start with the driver? Actually, oh, plastic like warm up driver. And vehicle? Yeah. Well, like, who is all booth? booth? All, all booth is one of those Joes that's very signature, but also, I mean, almost uh, contradiction in terms. He's very forgettable. He's just he's his own man. He has a limited function. I've often mused that Tollbooth needed like staff. I mean, if the world building yeah. really was able to run away with itself, Tollbooth would have like a whole team of combat engineers oh, yeah. and and Absolutely. like laborers essentially. People to operate with heavy machinery. He would be the foreman of a team of Joes. Yeah, because um, it would take more than that. one person realistically to kind of like properly manage this a, a bridge layer. I think a team of Not three. Just that I mean, like Tolbooth, he's the file card is is great in illustrating this point. Let's actually it's bring that so up. It's so good. It's such a good. Stalker file has a quote card. saying, yeah. "We're on our way to an objective and come to an obstacle we can't cross: river, crevasse, mountain, whatever." Tolbooth gets us across. He may build a bridge out of whatever's there, blast a pass through solid rock, or lay down a four-lane blacktop. The man's got magic. And I put it to you, Stalker, that he can't work his magic alone. Like, yeah. yes, one he man, man magic out man. all these amazing ways of the G.I. Joe team overcoming an obstacle, but he can't carry it out on his own. And what are you going to do? Divert combat troops to building a four-lane blacktop? Mm -hmm. So, yes, he's kind of stuck in first gear uh, to me anyway. But I do have the figure yeah. to hand. Where did my son? Oh, also, um, I also feel like uh, Stalker's quote here is, is it comes more from the perspective of this is the first time somebody's ever worked with the Department of, of Road Construction or some <laughs> or, or a road construction engineer. Um, I say that because like what Tollbooth does, I don't want to say that it's unremarkable. What I want to say is is that it is pretty. It is actually quite a remarkable job. That a lot of very successful people do, mm. and um, that is why we have roads and why we have, you know, <laughs> um, the kind of you know tunnels passes through mountains and stuff like that. We have a lot of incredible people who do this. So I suppose if you meet one and you're not only calling. one, it's a passion, yeah, their think. skill, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that their skill would come across as really impressive, which it is. It's just. Stalker is kind of making him out to be the best of the best of the best, so But I think he's just, you know, a, just a great engineer, like a lot of great engineers are. But I, I like that the file card, the file card does bring across the passion of someone who enjoys doing this. You know, it kind of oh, like definitely. elaborates on his entire life. He got to play sets, construction sets. Every Christmas, he wore them out. They got bigger and better. Uh, he went to MIT to, to study engineering, um, and he just was always looking for the next big challenge. And I suppose being able to build bridges anywhere or, you know, be able to construct <laughs> something to allow <laughs> you to go anywhere um, was yeah. the chance that he was looking for. And he is, I think, that just kind of shows, you know, there is this passion for for building um, mm. from the character. And I like the little... It little is going to strain believability that someone with a master's from MIT entered the armed service as an enlisted man. I don't know much about armed services, but that kind of hit me between the eyes that like yeah. if you are a college graduate and, and and a graduate with a college degree um the army would probably want to not put you in at the bottom but somewhere yeah you know, you'd probably be oh, even helping yeah like build not build things but you'd be in charge of like armies or you know like you'd be in charge of the engineering division oh well he would be part of something like the army corps of engineers which is a yeah thing. But uh, I mean, his grade like is that, SP5, which I suppose I'm guessing means special. Specialist, mm. uh, but still an enlisted rank. Anyway, it's... it's mm. Oh, yeah. a, another th thing that I gleaned from, uh, I think it was Form BX257, or maybe Hooded Cobra Commander's review of the bridge layer, that his rank was phased out the very year that he was introduced in 1995. Oh, no Interesting. Though... Uh, I'm going to also drop a little bit of a knowledge bomb in case you haven't watched those reviews. They're excellent. Go check them out. But we regard this as a 1985 vehicle. However, it did see limited release in 1984, in sort of the, the end of the year, right around Christmas time, through the, Ooh, Sears, the Sears catalog. Ooh, yeah. very cool. I think that you was can, a subject. 
a pre-release. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exclusively through Sears. And that would explain, I guess, why this figure has just a swivel neck and not a, yeah. a ball and socket to allow him to there look up. That, and that swagger is built in, hey? That, like, off-kilter hat. That's, oh, yes. That's, that's amazing. It's very this cool. is what He's makes him cooler than hardtop. <laughs> uh, hardtop, really right? That is the, yeah, hardtop's the other guy with the hard hat. And yes, yeah. hardtop looks like a nerd compared to this open collar cool guy. And, and another thing worth noting on old um, Tolby's sculpt, his dog tags are picked out in silver paint. That's a nice detail. Yep. A it's nice, it's a nice figure overall. Um, you know, yes, the, 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 the heart hat is orange, but the rest of his outfits is very muted, the colors. He's and it has got character. such a, like a manly face. He's not a he handsome does. man. He really does. But he's such a PT teacher, man. Drop and give me 20. Then I want five laps around the field. But the figure itself go, 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 go. Like it has today. character. Woo, woo, woo. You know, because of the oh, open shirts, sure. the way that he wears the helmet. Uh, he's it's got a waistcoat. A lot more <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cute. I mean, why? But that why? is a workman's thing. That, it's not that even. Was kind no, of it, it's got no. no pouches or pockets. It's not a utility wear. He really just maybe it's wears not... a waistcoat because it maybe, maybe makes him look more buff. I don't know. Like a fight. <laughs> I think the lack of actually do the buttons up one. No, I think the lack of pouches and stuff like that might have just been. <laughs> they don't want to overbox the figure, but I think that waistcoat is kind of synonymous with um his role. Like I don't think it's just there for like swag sake. I think it's there just well, to. I think it does they, have a purpose. They wanted the, they wanted the detailing of the, the the safety jackets that you would see on construction workers, but they didn't want to overdo the coloring. Yeah. So that's yeah, why they like, orange. Like, you know, and he comes well, with that's a very an unique... ironic little twist. Then Rob, I mean, mm. the one opening where they could have introduced neon colors, they were like, nope, <sighs> nope. They're actively nope. resisting it. He's not going to have a I think high vis. It was too um, early in the too early in the in in, in the the toys toy series to really go wild with colors. I think. No, well, they're skating but on the edge. Wi-Fi was, like, was just had. one year away. Well, that's where they went wild, and I like <laughs> that he comes with a with the hammer, a sledgehammer. I think that's it's it's a mm. very unique accessory for a character to come with, and it suits his role as well very much. So, so instead of coming with the gun, he comes with a sledgehammer. It kind of it supports what he does. Yeah, Which because I think of maintenance. Really, com <laughs> it completes the character. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm only half joking about that, by the way. Like, oh, for sure. Um, a, a, a hammer is actually in a tank operator's cool toolkit, and it is sometimes for exactly that for percussive maintenance. Sometimes it's oh, like for sh I'm you sure have to like be, yeah. smack some kind of something straight, you know, because it's blocking a a a, a bogey or something. Hmm. So, yep. Toll booth is a lot more interesting a than you wheel. Gotta yeah, there we go. Mm. And um, I think Toll Booth is a lot more interesting than his specialty, and a lot more interesting than like he, it's somebody describing him to you. He's actually a more interesting figure than that. Oh, somebody that describes him as a construction man. You're like, okay, but when you see him, the swagger and stuff that he has, mm. it's it this character there, and that's that's a lot of fun. It's I, more I than you would expect elevated. from a support vehicle. The driver of a support vehicle. Exactly. Guys, exactly what do you suppose that. kind of child would play out adventures with the bridge layer? Because I certainly wasn't that child. I would say someone who already owns a bunch of like land vehicles. Because by this point, you well, in the same year, All Striker came out, the Armadillo, and the Mauler, the Snowcat. And of course, we already have a whole bunch of other vehicles that exist for this thing to help you know cross terrain i mean 84 came out the slugger the van mark 2 83 the apc you know the you know the wolverine um yeah so, so a ton of vehicles cool that could combat use vehicles that you quickly play with in you know yeah, more like adventurous sh sh play or more action each play. other but and then the building ruts for the bridge layer to span who's that okay child? So it would it, okay, so, would it be you, Paul? Yeah, I was actually going to say. So these are the kids that I think would have enjoyed something like a bridge layer. Um, it's the kids that have a garden that's kind of really crazy. Maybe it's not full of grass everywhere. Maybe it's like 
Maybe you live on like kind of a like a plot or a farm kind of a little space more wild or on the edge of a forest, yeah. maybe even you know. Yeah, where like you, exactly where you can't realistically drive your tank vehicles through that like those kind of humps and where you uh, where maybe a part of you craves that real reality where you don't want to fly your tank over that kind of space. Um, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at me. But I think that there are going to be a few people out there who might relate to this uh, statement. Uh, kids who feel uncomfortable touching g- the dirt or grass. Okay. Hmm. In a weird way, a-, a bridge layer is a kind of like a like a way to create like a tactile dissonance. You know, to get away from you know being able to play outside, but not necessarily like being able to touch the ground so much. Which could in some way, uh, I feel like there are some kids who definitely benefited from the, from this. And then the third um, side of it is the kid who, and, and this is actually, I think quite a common one. If you lived in like a city or an urban environment with very little access to things like parks and stuff, um, this vehicle conceptually would have seemed like such a bummer until you had it in your life because all of a sudden all these uneven surfaces in your bedroom and in your home start becoming like, you know, challenges to get your bridge layer across and to see if you can, you know, work out the puzzle of trying to get your, your armored yeah, column. Like literally owning that. the vehicle creates new play patterns. It creates new yeah. scenarios that you can see around you. And I think also, you know, people interested in, you know, in, I suppose, puzzles in engineering, um, well, the same people that maybe watch Star Trek, the next generation, maybe they love science, yeah. you know, it inspires them uh, to do more. Um, a cool feature about the vehicle is it also has a, a tow hook, nice. which is great because I mean, obviously, by this point, we already have the the HAL, the MMS, uh, what else, the mountain howitzer. Um, so not slam. only, yeah, the slam the as slam. well, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, so it, yeah. No, the slam. If, slam isn't actually a towable weapon system, Paul, and it it wasn't. Uh, out sorry. Twin no. battle gun. Um, but yeah. So if you own those, this is another vehicle that can tow those. Hopefully, I mean, because none of us own it, we don't actually know if they. My research to- says that it has a tough time towing things because, for whatever reason, mm. the tow hitch is positioned very high. Uh, yeah. That's unfortunate. The, the, the rear end of the vehicle kind of pitches up. Um, it's it's set quite high off the ground for whatever reason, um, and as a result, you're going to battle to tow something without dragging. Like the hell doesn't work. The Wolverine, oh no, the twin, twin battle gun may or may not. Uh, the the MMS definitely not. That will drag. Um, mm. I believe the best thing to tow is the mountain howitzer. Which came out in the same year. Yeah, but still, well, it, it will then like pitch the, the 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 front end of the or the rear end. Well, in the direction of travel, the rear end of the howitzer will be pitched down because mm. the tow hitch is is kind of having to stretch up so high. Guys, I think we should break the suspense. Detail. Let's I think uh, we should. announce our 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 allegiance or or disdain for this vehicle. Um. Rob, what say you? Do you want this in your collection? I I would actually like this in my collection. I think it's a very different type of vehicle. Um, and I think for the reasons that Paul kind of laid out and that we've been saying, I think it, it fills a niche where you can probably have almost too many uh, similar type vehicles, though combat vehicles. It's kind of cool to have a utility vehicle that does mm-hmm. encourage different types of play because I think it really can enhance your play patterns when you are trying to use your vehicles in terrain that maybe you would never have even thought of putting your toys. And Switch I think that's up. really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, is it you? Are you the bastard? Do you hate this thing? Do you hate it? I can do tell. Do I hate you. this? No. Um, my oh. my thing is with this, with this little bad boy is uh, initially I always thought it was a bit boring. Like, I, uh, in the context of the in the greater context of GI Joe vehicles, I thought maybe the bridge layer was kind of boring. As I mentioned earlier, I did think it was a generic vehicle that was in the GI Joe animated series uh, that appeared on that uh, Captives of Cobra episode. Um, but then, 
uh, when I discovered it in Mark Bellomo's book, I, I kind of gave it a second look and I was like, oh, this is actually a real thing. This exists, but it's not too thrilling. And um, with all due respect to Mark Bellomo, uh, the first version of your book is not the most flattering uh, for, the, for the bridge layer. And then I saw one at JoeCon. And when I saw this thing at uh, JoeCon, I was like, wow. This is very impressive. This is a very clever design. It's very real world. It's very grounded in real world. It's very intricate. It's got a lot of meticulousness. And by the t and at that point, um, I had experienced a, a lot of GI Joe vehicles, and we had discussed uh, a lot of GI Joe vehicles. So this thing just had this kind of edge to it that I, the same edge that I love about the Ram, the same edge that I love about the original Vamp. There's just this. Pardon me. There's just this thing. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's just this thing that's like that's just there. Like it's got teeth, and I gotta say, it's actually very sexy. Like if you take if the, when the bridge has been deployed, it's actually a sexy looking little tank. It's got a cool profile to it. So yeah, I I'm somebody who would like to own a bridge layer, and I am incredible, like extremely surprised by the fact that I'm I'm into this because. Yeah, because you would, I think, on the face of it, you think it's a boring vehicle, but it is very yeah. unique in the entire, uh, you know, the catalog of GI Joe vehicles because of its exactly. purpose. And I think it's just not just for play patterns. I mean, it's also probably great for dyers as well. You yeah. can probably create really intricate displays with with, with with your vehicles and your figures by having the bridge layer at your disposal. Yep. And I think one of the greatest. I think one of the things that hurts this vehicle, um, and I mean, this this is completely anecdotal. I don't know how the greater GI Joe feels about the bridge layer because it's not it's not an easy mark like the Coastal Defender or the Road Toad where <laughs> every one of us looks at it and feels that it's absurd. Um, I'm pretty sure that this vehicle has quite a huge um, like fan base to it, but the... Um, but the, the sheer fact that it's called a bridge layer, I think kind of hurts it, you know, because people just... It doesn't have a think, cool name, exactly. Bridge layer, yeah. alternatively, toss and cross. Toss now, that's and cross. like that's a lewd really cool. act, if you ask me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and But it also <laughs> limits... It kind of limits the imagination. It's kind of... What's happening is because of that, I think the feedback loop that happens, at least what happens to me, is my the f feedback loop is like, okay, well, it can, it can make bridges. So the immediate urgency for me to own one is not there. But when I gave well, it some serious Well, after this podcast, thought, I expect you to immediately rush to your local eBay. <laughs> and grab one, yeah. Um, but after some like... Because yes, let's uh, like, diffuse the suspense. It is I. I hate this thing and I don't want it to ever see light of day in my collection. <laughs> Sorry! Yuck. Well, Yuck. if you were wondering, yes, Stephen does What a... Um, Dull toy, inviting absolutely dull play for dullards. Boom. Wow! Push, push. I actually play. attack the uh, attack the problem, not the man, Steve. <laughs> okay. okay. Don't call it the problem. Don't I'll call it the problem. Appreciate is. dullards. The problem yeah. is rooted in its function. There are ways okay. of constructing a bridge layer toy that do not involve two. 40-year-old plastic arms that need to be squashed together in order to free the bridge itself. This thing has a fatally flawed design that limits its play. Fluffies. In fact, you don't want to ever play with your bridge layer for fear of breaking it. If you have a mint bridge mm. layer in your collection, you are living in terror. Like, this thing's one trick. It cannot perform because you're scared of breakage. So that makes it uh, that's just the, the death blow for this toy for me. It has one function and you cannot do it ever. Well, it means you want to own two of them. And I think that's <laughs> great. You have one I, in this position. You have one that is deployed. That's two. That's bridge layers. But Incredible. Steve's also somebody who's a strong, um, who's a big appreciator of the silver Mirage. And mm. it also has like a fatal flaw in its design. Yet Stephen has found a way to, uh, work around that and make that work for him. And yeah, I, I think, think Steve, as if somebody gave you a bridge layer, knowing you the way I know you, you would find broken... a way to try and reinforce that section 
and make it work for you yeah. so that this toy a, doesn't become an unconquerable mountain for you, that it becomes something that like you can actually functionally use. I'm not saying that you're going to go and buy one. I'm saying that if you had one, you would find a solution to that problem. Yeah. You wouldn't, saying, you up, wouldn't up, live in fear. <laughs> up front, he's, he doesn't even want to take that chance. He's just, he's yeah. not interested in that. But I think that is a challenge that a lot, a lot of people would take up. But I think, yes, as a vintage toy, maybe there are, you know, um, fragility to the toy. But I think getting this thing fresh, it would have been an absolute blast to play with as a kid back in the 80s and the 90s. Like, you would have a, a lot of fun with this thing. And I think you still can, even as a, as a vintage toy. Because as Paul says, there are ways of reinforcing these problems. Um, there are ways of... Of fixing it in such a way that you know it can still be very useful. Three mm. D printing is amazing. Collection. Exactly, like, that's the thing. I mean, we've, we've all seen with um, the way that um, Mauler Joe um, customized the the Mauler tank in ways yeah. um, that you can do. There are ways of fixing this or improving it if you are willing to put the time into it and the effort to to making it work out for you. And we're totally. all adults here. We have, to, you know, we, we can make the time. We've we got adult like, money. We've got adult the thing time. And you're like, oh, yeah. it's broken. I can't do anything with it. Mm. And Tollbooth is a me, very cool internet. figure. Um, yes, Stephen was able to get his Tollbooth separate from getting the, you know, the bridge layer itself. So he, he, you, obviously, he obviously acknowledges, you know, that the, 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 the driver that comes with this thing is really cool. And I think being able to pair him with his vehicle would be is the ultimate, you know, expression I, with with the exception that like i now have the experience of trying to integrate toll booth into my collection and mm. i don't feel like he's a rock star enough to hold shelf space with the rest of class of 85 i don't wow. want him to hang out with snake eyes and dusty and shipwreck and airtight and quick kick and alpine and bazooka i mean like what a you send him to space I mean, to what a to destroy a forgettable an addition to that year so what do I have him do if him if he's I don't have a bridge layer I don't um, put have him a in your armor put him into a vehicle and then forget about him so what does he do for me he's a support character that like I don't have any interest in playing out his use or his function he's really just another member of a GI Joe team to be brought out when there's a ditch to be dug. Or something to be sledgehammered. A really cool play pattern I was just thinking about now is this would actually be really nicely paired with the whale. Because the whale would be the head of, you know, whatever uh, convoy that you would be have, having going through territory. It kind of goes ahead. It can it can go through the spaces that the bridge, that no, the other vehicles cannot yet. So it goes ahead. It kind of like holds the line. Bridge day comes behind. You know, it's whale is forwarded the river. The bridge day comes, put the bridge down. And then you had to, you can actually have all your vehicles cross that that space. Um, hmm. So already that's really cool. You know what a cool pairing! Like seeing like a, a whale and, and a bridge layer kind of like going through it. Um, I, the I, 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 I great possibility. I'm critical of that point, but I I agree with it in the sense that you 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 pairing two of the kind of real one trick ponies of the GI Joe line together mm -hmm. because I've got a hot take about the whale too. That it's just it, its function or its 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 proliferation in the GI Joe media is so contrived. Hovercrafts mm. have a very like narrow, like functional. They don't have the range of seagoing vessels, you know, hard shell, hard hard hulled boats, deep sea mm -hmm. boats, um, and they can't obviously do what an off road vehicle can do. Like there's very limited terrain that a hovercraft can traverse fair enough so when you saw, saw it proliferated in gi joe cartoon appearances they were really just massaging it in because gi joe didn't have a main boat um beyond the flag i suppose they used a few other kind of frigates and, and smaller ve vessels but like the, the the whale being the toy the sort of a flagship toy was seeing a like pulling a lot of duty in the car well, it, it was and just to make it easier for the you know, for them to have adventures in any terrain, I guess. Because my you know, suspension that's just belief you didn't support it. it. It's like oh. either we're in the swamp or racing along the beach or like sort of in the surf. But like outside of that, the whale has no function. And outside of laying bridges, the bridge layer has no function. 
these toys yeah. take up space on my shelf and don't get as much play as, okay. as they need to to warrant taking up that space. Good, I'm glad we're back on the bridge layer. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm you right. do play Save with it, you're going to have a day. great time with it. Well, Paul, you but, need to get a whale so we can talk about it on one of these episodes. <laughs> Dude, I would love Good to luck. get a whale. Um, I think it's a beautiful toy. Um, but that whole breaking mid, uh, rear fin thing, um, I'm so glad that we live in an age now where 3D printing is where it's at um, because that yeah. definitely makes the whale less formidable um, to own. But it's just a big no boy, then. you know. No, well, no, they, there's a, the space, space is a limitation at the moment. The current <laughs> challenge at the moment for that. But coming back to the bridge layer, I, I do think that, um, just to continue with the point I was making earlier, the fatal flaw is that it is called a bridge layer and that creates a... In, the, in most people's minds, that just makes them sit on the fact that that's what it does. And you've already played, or most people have already played with this, this toy in their head before they even get a chance to be excited about it. But when you take the, the bridge layer and you really think about what you can do with it, and you really think about the challenges that it can surpass and overcome, um, that aren't just about bridging a gap. Sometimes, I, I'm so, I was actually pleased to see in the comic book, it was used to cover quicksand, for example. Um, it can also be used as a way to, uh, is it technically a bridge, but if you went up to a higher elevation, maybe there's a way that you could get, you know, a track up onto a higher elevated point that isn't necessarily, um, you know, separated by some kind of gorge, but isn't very tank accessible. So you are sort of creating a line, a tether to that point. Uh, the bridge layer, uh, with some suspension of disbelief, it could be a great kind of, when I say space vehicle, it could be the kind of thing that could be used to create um, an outpost or something in space or an, you know, an emergency like spaceship landing pad or launch pad or something like that. It's, I think the... the it's the, only the term as limited layer, as your limited. imagination, yeah. you know. But I think once yeah. you see it and you kind of wrap your head around it, it can really be a, a central point in the way that you do play with your toys. And it does create new opportunities to have fun. Um, so yeah, get out there and toss and cross, guys. It gives me no <laughs> satisfaction yeah, lay, lay to some bridge. whale. Four minutes it, it gives me no satisfaction to criticize a GI Joe toy, especially one that is lovingly sculpted, uh, yeah, realistic, very well created. And comes from that that golden era of GI Joe. But you mm. can see with the perhaps the bridge layer most spe spe specifically of all GI Joe toys this pushback against super realism that like a toy that does one function, very specialized function and does it excep exceptionally well uh, with the caveat of the, the you know, breakable uh, prongs aside, like this is so realistic and so niche that I, I can't imagine it being a very popular toy. Um, no, and, I don't and think kind it of was. A, a mixed response toy. Why would you get yeah. this if you get the Mauler? I suppose price does come into play, but you could also I think get you got this it was on and sale. a couple of figures for the same price. My my point is like <laughs> this is an expression of what G.I. Joe, a real American hero's roots were in that the green army man bag where ah, you'd have the yeah. rifleman, you'd have the bazooka soldier, but you'd also have the guy with the radio or the guy with the binoculars, the guy sort of putting his hand up. Grenade. Like you have Grenade these... Guy other roles that are less exciting and less played with, but it's important to have it in your bag of green army men. This mm -hmm. is one mm -hmm. of those toys. But shortly after this, you got things like the havoc, which is just mm -hmm. all out toy fun. Like realism be damned. Give the person, give the child at the same price point, the most fun they can possibly have with well, a amount of they plastic. They certainly did pivot it's away from the hyper-realism. I think that they were going for up to around about 85, you know, where every vehicle mm. was very much how they had a real-world counterpart to it. Um, but I like to think that the kids of 1983, 84, and 85, they really had a great time kind of really playing out war, it's but fun war. Yeah. Yes. You know. I also think that a lot of kids got this um, from grandmas and aunties and <laughs> whatever that got that got them from special. No, no, not that didn't know better. That saw them at Sears, at Walmart, at KBs or something on special because they were probably discounted. 
It came with two extra GI Joes bundled with it or something, and they were like, "Oh, that would be a nice present for little Timmy or Johnny." Or you see, there you go. You didn't even Rain, have to pay for it you know? yourself. You didn't have to convince your parents to pay for it. You, an unsuspecting other family member would have got this for you because they were like, "Oh, it's cheap." They love GI Joe. I heard You're that. Making me wonder now if this was expensive. one of the experienced toys of of its day. I think it I may mean, be. As Paul said, yeah. it does sound very boring, you know, before you actually wrap your head around it and think about how you would play with it. Like, it's a bridge layer. Mm-hmm. That sounds really boring if you don't think about it a little bit further. And I think it's it's a very inoffensive toy. You know, like, I can I can actually imagine my mother buying this for me with Scoop. Mm. She'd be like, here's Scoop, and here's this thing. It lays bridges. It, mm. it, it doesn't have any guns. <laughs> it's fine. You only have to worry about violence. It's not going to happen, you know. And it's made from plastic. You can't break it. It's great. You're going to have lots of fun with it. Um, Thanks, Mom. Uh, Thanks, yes. Well, Jens, like I said before, I expect you both to rush out and buy yours. But, like, yeah, I, 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 I would be very surprised if ever I own a bridge layer one day. It would have to kind of be something that's staring me in For the sure. face. Um, but that's the no, great you know, it's it's deal somewhere. I, I appreciate the fact that it exists in the GI Joe toy line, which spans so much mm-hmm. and is so varied that it, it has its place there. But like, there's no way I, I'd, I'd gravitate towards playing with it, and especially now that the plastic is the age that it is, and the mechanism is as ill thought out as it is. Like, yeah, you do have to take wow. that into account, like it, the age and, totally. and the problems One that it has. One thing that it can do, you are terrified of making it do. I, my they... if I had this thing in hand for a long time, and I kind of knew the tolerances very well. Like my, From my what... childhood collection, I feel are genuinely more hardy than stuff that I get in now because I, I've played with them and I've kind of kept no, the plastic the, the tolerances. Supple. Like limber. I don't know. It's probably all in my head. <laughs> but, um, it probably is, actually. But thankfully, this thing doesn't go for much. Um, from what I've been looking at on eBay, oh. um, complete versions are about 1,200 rand, which doesn't sound like a lot to me, 1,200 rand. That's like Obviously, then you add shipping, which is, again, 1,200 rand. And that's multiple versions that I've seen on eBay. Um, so it's not most expensive toy to get um which is fantastic you know it's not it's not killing your budget to to actually own this and to own, so, own multiples of them and get someone to 3d print you something so it doesn't break so easily. <laughs> i was gonna say yeah in my in my closing comments for this uh and i'm sorry for the very um trite comparison here but this uh i almost feel very guilty for the dislike that I had for this vehicle um, in my only Joe fandom mm-hmm. uh, because I, I feel bad. for some reason, clearly lacked the imagination or I wasn't listening to my inner child properly. Didn't mm-hmm. realize how awesome this could have been because, and, and I do, I feel guilty for that. Um, but now, I, you know, having seen it at Joe Con, I do feel redeemed a little, even though I don't own one. And I also think it's great that we live in, in the future now where 3D printing isn't just fragile resin filament or fragile filament anymore. We've actually got all types of different uh, resin compounds and things like that. Yeah. Some of Lumen. which are actually designed to take this, to, to uh, like sort of handle a lot of uh, bending and, and uh, are very malleable uh, as you know, and, yeah. and very like sturdy. And, you know, those parts that are breakable on something like the bridge layer, can actually be fabricated and that is that is awesome that's not something we could have said 15 years ago or 10 years ago even um so yeah maybe this vehicle does deserve um another glance if you're worried about its fragility and um also just a quick thing about the slam how do you drive it if it's not a towable vehicle and moving on to (laughs) <laughs> many mysteries Sorry. of the 1987 toy line we thank our patrons <laughs> as always and our YouTube members you incredible people, people thank you so every much month. wonderful, I, wonderful. The, I want to know what people think of the bridge layer I want to know what your yeah. experience was with this thing as a child in America was this a peg warmer or a shelf or elsewhere? warmer Canada's a place or, yeah but I mean I, I'm just saying America mostly 
I don't know how I wonder how many of these actually left the states. And I'm um, curious. I wonder if this was an international was available in Europe. Now that it, now that now that you have me wondering. I, mm, I wonder. I, I hope so. Yeah, let us know how much you, how cool you think the bridge layer is or how much you hate it yeah. like Steven does. Um yeah. <laughs> And catch us in 343 when we'll be talking about something. Something and also, amazing. you're not a dullard for liking it. True. <laughs> very smart. Yo, yeah, yo. Yeah. Berg. Good player. Bridge layer, board and slayer. It's green. Go and buy one your player. Yeah. Word boogie. Talk to me, bro.